Just before we get started, if you like this sort of video, you should definitely check out our podcast where we explore a whole bunch of stuff. Deeper looks into things just like this subject. And the best place to check out our podcast is on our new website, which we made with Wix. You can find it at brainfood.fm. Wix allows you to create a website for your personal brand, your business, your wedding, or for any other reason you can think of. When Wix heard that we were doing a podcast, they thought that they could help us out by sponsoring us, and they now fully support podcasts on their website builder, so that was good. In fact, I know nothing about making websites, but with Wix, I had a great time and the results also look great. Here is the site I made. You can see that I went for having the podcast on the homepage. I figure that's what people are coming for. It also updates every time we add a new episode, all automatic. Then I kept it lightweight, just adding an about page and then the all important contact page and a place for potential sponsors to reach out. No heavy lifting, it's all drag and drop. I even made it easy on myself by using a template. They do allow you to start from scratch but I'm genuinely terrible at designing things, so that template was pretty handy. Wix offers unlimited pages and top grade hosting for free. You can upgrade to one of their premium plans for as little as $5 a month if you want even more. Just go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash brain food to get started. I mean, why not? Or if you're really lazy to type that in, just click below. So in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Kyle S. asks us, why didn't Chewie get a medal at the end of the original Star Wars movie? For years, fans of the Star Wars franchise have expressed frustration with the fact that Chewbacca didn't get a medal at the close of Star Wars A New Hope, despite playing a pivotal role in the destruction of the Death Star. Since then, George Lucas has endlessly meddled with the movies, but stopped short of giving a CGI medal to Chewbacca and instead decided that Greedo apparently had the worst aim in the galaxy. But the question still remains, why didn't he get that damn medal? To begin with, there's no canonical explanation for why the lover book Ashika wasn't rewarded for his bravery when his co-pilot was. This is because after Disney gained ownership of the Star Wars franchise, they decided to delete from canon the entire expanded universe so that you don't get to know ahead of time what's going to happen in the upcoming films and the writers are not bound to the storylines in the numerous comics, video games, and books that were released by Lucasfilm over the years. It also no doubt helped that this way they can make a whole lot more money Money by rebooting the entire thing with many new books and other media based on the upcoming films. Okay, so the old expanded universe, it could certainly use a little house cleaning, with Lucas having been notoriously lax at policing inconsistencies. It's still a little unfortunate, as particularly Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command, the first of which was set five years after the return of the Jedi, are amazing and would have been amazing to see on the big screen in some form or another. Indeed, they are orders of magnitude better than what Disney came up with. As a result of all of this, the current official canon of Star Wars is rather more limited than it was not so many years ago. While Disney has acknowledged that its writers are free to take inspiration from the expanded universe, they're also free to ignore it and come up with their own ideas so long as it doesn't contradict the canon that Disney establishes from here on out. This means that Chewbacca never got a medal, Boba Fett never escaped the Sarlacc pit, and Darth Vader's glove never went on a planet-hopping adventure after Luke cut his hands off. But since we never pass up an opportunity to delve into the Star Wars universe, we may as well thumb our noses at Disney's decree and dig deeper into the saga of Chewie's lack of a medal. To do this, we must go back to the beginning, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far too full of terry cloth jumpsuits. George Lucas gave an interview recorded just weeks after the release of A New Hope when asked why Chewbacca got stiffed on the medal front, and Lucas explained that the Wookiee people do not care for medals. Because of this, Chewbacca simply didn't want it. This is strange, because according to the film's novelization, which was released six months before the film and was supposedly written by George Lucas, Chewbacca did get a medal during the award ceremony. As it turns out, the book was actually written by a ghostwriter called Alan Dean Foster, who based the majority of the novel on Lucas's original screenplay, where Chewbacca was awarded a medal for his part in destroying the Death Star, meaning it was initially Lucas's intention for Chewbacca to get a medal. To quote the draft from May of 1912, in 1974, Queen Leia, in all her grandeur, sits on the magnificent throne of Aquilae. Starkiller and the General stand to her right. Several old advisors stand to her left. Han presents Chewbacca and a delegation of Wookiees with a treaty, gifts, and a medal of honor. They bow and exit. 
Han moves to one side of the crowded court. Exactly why Lucas decided to make this change during the many revisions of the script isn't clear, because he eventually went back on his explanation that Wookiees don't place value in tangible rewards in a later interview with the official Star Wars fan club, instead claiming that Chewbacca did get a medal in a small ceremony after the one seen in the film. This is because Chewbacca is so much taller than Princess Leia, Chewbacca being 7 feet 6 inches tall according to canon, which is 3 inches taller than Peter Mayhew, the actor who physically portrays him. Because of this height difference, she couldn't place the medal around the Wookiee's neck. The explanation was expanded upon in a 1980 comic, The Day After the Death Star. In it, Chewbacca is given a medal by Princess Leia in a small private ceremony, with Leia having to stand on a table so she can reach him more comfortably, which really did leave us wondering, well, why didn't he just bend down? The comic also alludes to Lucas's earlier assertion that Wookiees didn't place value in material rewards by showing that Chewbacca initially refuses the medal, only changing his mind at the behest of Han Solo, thus explaining why he was awarded it the day afterward. But even if you reject such works that are no longer a part of canon, Chewbacca was kind of awarded a medal some two decades after the original film during the 1997 MTV Movie Awards. At this award ceremony, he won a Lifetime Achievement Award, which was intentionally styled to look exactly like a medal of bravery from the film, and it was presented to him by none other than Princess Leia, aka Carrie Fisher. While not exactly canon, the award was seen as a rather tongue-in-cheek way of addressing one of the major fan complaints about the original trilogy. It was also supported by Lucasfilm, who provided Mayhew with a copy of his costume to wear on stage. Upon receiving the award, Chewbacca addressed the crowd and uttered a few short words of appreciation before being given a rousing round of applause. In the end, while he may have been slighted in A New Hope, as Chewbacca himself, Peter Mayhew noted, Chewie did get the last word in the film. And now for some bonus facts. Speaking of film endings that had a glaring mistake, in the original TV version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Rudolph, Hermie, and Yukon Cornelius promise to help the toys on the island of misfit toys. However, once Rudolph and company leave the island, they never actually bother to help the toys. This resulted in numerous complaints that Rudolph broke his promise, so a new scene was added to the end of a subsequent version of the film where Rudolph leads Santa to the island to collect all the toys. And now for another bonus fact. According to Mayhew, during the filming of the Endor scenes, he wasn't allowed to walk around the forest in costume without guards because the crew were concerned that he'd be shot by a hunter, perhaps mistaking him for Bigfoot. On that note, in one questionable extended universe comic called Into the Great Unknown, Chewbacca and Han Solo crash into a forest on Earth. While Han Solo is ultimately killed by the natives, Chewbacca survives and spends 126 years roaming the forest where he becomes mistaken for Bigfoot in later years. In the same comic, the skeleton of Han Solo is found by Indiana Jones, who states that the skeleton somehow seems familiar. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos and also check out Wix. You can support this show by going to wix.com forward slash go forward slash brain food and check out our website that was made with Wix at brainfood.fm. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs> I've never seen Star Wars. I have no idea how to pronounce this stuff.